very good afternoon to you. Today I'm going to continue once again in this great book by the Puritan Thomas Watson and the book is titled The Lord's Prayer. I'm coming to you from the second petition of the Lord's Prayer. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I'm under the heading in the chapter, what shall we do that we may not miss this kingdom of glory and I'm on number nine today, number nine. If you would not come short of the kingdom of heaven, take heed of indulging any sin. One millstone will drown, as well as more, and one sin lived in will damn, as well as more. If any one sin reign, it will keep you from reigning in the kingdom of heaven. Especially keep from sins of presumption, which waste conscience, and the sin of your natural constitution, the darling sin, as us Augustine would say. I kept myself from my iniquity, that sin which my heart would soonest decoy and flatter me into. Psalm 18:23. As in the hive there is one master bee, so in the heart one master sin. Oh, take heed of this. I think the Puritan here gives us such wisdom and highlights it perfectly. He gives us this example. As in the hive there is one master bee, so in the heart there is often one master sin. Oh, take heed of this, Watson says. How may this sin be known? That sin for which a man cannot enjoy the arrow of a reproof is the bosom sin. Herod could not brook to have his incest meddled with. That was a touch me not. Men can become content to have other sins he claimed against, but if a minister puts his finger upon the sore and touches upon one special sin, then their eyes will flash with fire. They are in, enraged and spit the venom of malice. That sin which a man's heart runs out most to and he is most easily captivated by is the Delilah in the bosom. One man is overcome with wantonness, another by worldliness. It is a sad thing for a man to be so bewitched by a beloved sin that if it ask him to part with not only one half of the kingdom but the whole kingdom of heaven, he must part with it to gratify that lust. That sin which most troubles a man and flies in the face in an hour of sickness and distress is the sin he has allowed himself in and is his complexion sin. When Joseph's brethren were distressed, their sin in selling their brother came into their remembrance. We are verily guilty concerning our brother. So when a man is upon his sickbed, and conscience shall say, Thou hast been guilty of such sin, the sin of slandering or uncleanness, conscience reads a man a sad lecture, and affrights him most for one sin. That is the complexion sin. That sin which a man is least inclined to part with is the endeared sin. Of all his sons, Jacob could most heartily part with Benjamin. Will ye take Benjamin away, he said. So says the sinner, this and that sin I have left. But must Benjamin go too? Must I part with this delightful sin that goes to the heart as with a castle that has several forts about it, the first and the second forts of which are yielded. When it comes to the main castle, the governor will rather fight and die than yield it. So a man may suffer many of his sins to be demolished. But when it comes to one, that is like the taking of a castle. He will never yield to part with that. Surely that is the master sin. Take heed especially of this sin. The strength of sin lies in the beloved sin. 
which, like a humour striking to the heart, brings death. I read, says Watson, another, a monarch who, being pursued by the enemy, threw away the crown of gold on his head, that he might run the faster. So the sin which thou didst wear as a crown of gold must be thrown away, that thou mayest run the faster to the kingdom of heaven. Of heaven. Oh, if you would not lose glory, mortify the beloved sin. Set it as a riot in the front of the battle to be slain. By plucking out this right arm, you will see the better to go to heaven. What a challenging section that is. You today, have you that beloved sin? You only know. Is there a sin that really, deep down, if you were being honest, and if you were putting yourself in the mirror of the Word of God, is there a sin that you do not want to give up? Is there a sin that you love more than you love God? Today be challenged. For if we are a child of God, as Watson so early encouraged us in, and that we belong to Him, you will give up this sin. And I am encourage you to, to speak to the God of heaven that by his spirit you shall refrain and, and kill mortify the deeds of the flesh as Watson said there may be sins that you have let go left behind but there may be one master sin if there is one master be is there today a master sin in your heart may God help you in the mortification of sin today and herein may God bless you in your pursuit of loving Christ. Amen.